Hello and welcome to Realm's Edge Gaming. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the amazing news that dropped today on the final day of Warhammer Fest, and that is the announcement that there is the new arrival, the new edition of Age of Sigmar 3rd Edition. So that was the, the kind of key article today that they dropped the video and that was the entire kind of Warhammer community Twitch stream on what it was all about. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look in depth at the kind of new models, the new front covers, um, and talk a little bit about what they uh, discussed, um, and maybe predict a few things, and, and talk about what we think. So this is the uh, apparently the front cover of the new rule book, and it, it's a cracking piece of artwork straight off the bat there. Um, it actually shows one of the new kind of figurehead models, the first one that we see, um, and we're going to take a look at that at the moment. But it's a really kind of nice image and I think it perfectly represents what they were talking about and how the Age of Sigmar kind of landscape and universe looks at the moment. Um, kind of, you know, they, they were saying that basically chaos has won and this is um, the, the forces of order, their opportunity to fight back and trying to reclaim it. And I think that kind of our way does kind of symbolise it and sum it up really nicely. So... That was the um the front cover of our new rule book, and they were talking about how this kind of also represents what the landscape's looking like at the moment, um how the humans are massively outnumbered. They were talking about you know if they kind of go to try and get somewhere that one into one out of a thousand might reach their destination, so humans are really heavily outnumbered at the moment, um and and things are looking pretty bleak for them. So, one of the new models that we met is Indrasta the Celestial Spear. Um, and they were talking about how um, how powerful she is. This is the model, and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. They were putting her on par with the, the Celestant Prime. And apparently, a lot of the next edition is going to be set in Gur, the Realm of Beasts. So, Indrasta is actually the um, a monster hunter from Gur. Um... And she's been reforged an awful lot. And unfortunately, that is actually starting to take a toll on her personality. And she's becoming increasingly warlike um, and aggressive. And even the other Stormcasts are starting to kind of raise eyebrows a bit as to, to kind of where she is and how she is kind of responding to things. But she is a, a very powerful character. And apparently one of the in-game rules is that the, the spear that she wields... I believe it's a celestial spear is amazing in battle too. I think the uh, the wings look absolutely beautiful. I just think that looks a cracking piece. Um, and when Golden Demon kind of restarts in twenty twenty two, I can very much imagine this being one of the models that people either paint up or convert. They were talking about how the um the runic designs also tie in very much so with the lore that we're kind of going to learn about this character. And also the base was representative and reflective of where some of the um, the battles might be fought. Apparently it's meant to represent like a mire or like a bog. And we can kind of see that the algae trailing down and that kind of branch as well. It reminded me quite a lot of the, the gaunt ghosts models that were previewed earlier this week with that kind of algae dripping down. I believe it was for the gaunt ghosts at least. It was one of the rumour engines too. But I just think it looks great. I really like the way as well that we've kind of got a different take on the armour. Um, you know, it's not too shiny gold. It looks a bit more toned down, more silvery, more ethereal to kind of tie in with the wings there with that bluish tint. And overall, I just think that it's a cracking model to kind of kick off with and a fitting um, kind of focal point for the front cover of the rulebook too. So that is Indrasta. And um, just it says a little bit about her that she's tasked with hunting down the most terrible monsters found in the mortal realms. She's carried into battle upon angelic wings and wielding the legendary spear Thengavar. And apparently her visage strikes terror into the enemies of Azir. So we've not seen all the Stormcasts, though we do see some more. Um, but it would be really cool if there was actually another winged unit and maybe kind of like a bodyguard one that would kind of go alongside this character who apparently, similar to Kragnos, who can kind of ally with any destruction force, apparently um, Indrasta can actually ally with any Order one. Um, I guess similar to, to you know some of the other characters, for example, the, the Lumineth twins. So that will be uh, 
interesting to see when the um the, the rules come out with the a lot of the um you know kind of the the setting being in Gur and where we said that uh, she's a monster hunter i'm sure the rules are going to reflect her abilities on the tabletop too and it was interesting to see on the map as well just above lendu we have none other than beast grave there so that is going to apparently feature quite prominently in the storyline as well I just think Games Workshop at the moment have been really, really clever with the, you know, the, the narrative aspect of the game, how everything seems to kind of be tied together, not only with the Broken Realm series, but also with the Breeze Grave, with the Warhammer Underworlds um, box set too. So it's kind of making me really, really excited for the, uh, for the future of Age of Sigmar 3.0. Got a bit of a back view there. Um, again, really nice modeling of the face. I just think she looks great. It did remind me a bit of some of the 40k um, Sisters of Battle with that kind of almost Saint Celestine, um, angelic appearance. I just think it's a cracking silhouette. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how she is on the tabletop. So here we go. This was the next um, Stormcast that we've got. It says, made stronger of mind and body, clad in Thunderstrike armor of an ingenious design, and wielding potent, blessed weapons, new reinforcements are ready to take the fight to the enemy. So this is one of our, our new Stormcast Eternals. And again, I, I think this is going to look great on the tabletop. So if you haven't read Bellacore and you kind of don't want to know anything that happens, um, I suggest maybe kind of revisiting the, the video once you've heard or read the book. Um, but we are going to talk a little bit about what happens in the events of Bellacore. So, as you know, if you've read the book Bellacore, he manages to kind of sever the link between the Stormcasts and Azir so that when they're killed or, you know, or defeated in battle, they can no longer kind of return to Sigmar and um, be reforged. And this is where the Thunderstrike armour um, comes into play. So, apparently, Grungni and Sigmar have been working very closely together and I imagine this is where we kind of get our, our kind of white bearded Dwadin that pops up, not only in the Bellacore book, but also in the Chronicles of the Wanderer, the series, the six part series that we've been covering in the um, in the in the videos. And apparently he's forged this armor with Sigmar to kind of strengthen the link between Azir and the warriors. And we are seeing the kind of new breed of um, of Stormcast. And I think they look very, very imposing, kind of very warlike. And it'll be interesting to see what this chamber is. I don't know if it'll be a destruction one or, or what it will be. But I just think they look absolutely brilliant. Um, and here they are kind of being painted in a variety of colour schemes for the different chambers and, uh, and the, uh, the different hosts themselves. I think there's some really effective colour schemes there. Next, we've got the Ving, um, Vindictors, who hold the line of the Thunderstrike hosts. They're equipped with Storm Spears um, and, and Heavy Shields, these ones. And each one is the equal of many mortal warriors. Hopefully, their rules will also reflect this too. Next, we've got our Annihilators, a new generation of Paladin. Built like a granite column and protected by the heaviest armour we've seen on a Stormcast, which grants them a 2 plus save. Apparently, they've got, um, you know, incredible momentum on the charge. And I actually think this model is probably, in terms of the actual Stormcast, um, after Indrastra, um, probably my favourite Stormcast that we saw today. I just think it looks incredibly imposing. And I actually thought it was a special character, but it's not. It is one of a unit. And goodness me, I can imagine the kind of damage that these will be able to deal out. And also the durability of them as well. I love the kind of lion design on the breastplate. Um, that that kind of shield looks amazing as well, with the um the kind of really striking iconography, and the the blue going off as well. I just think it looks cracking, and although I don't collect Stormcast, this has made me kind of think about whether it's going to be an army I'm going to be uh, picking up in the future. Because if the rest of them do look similar to this and in in Drasta, I will definitely be uh, tempted to do so. So they they talk a little bit about the kind of future of Age of Sigmar 3.0 um, and they say some of the things basically that the realms have been overrun by chaos. 
Chaos won, and this is basically the, the, the order, their attempt at reclaiming it, even though things are incredibly bleak, um, and there is a new kind of evil rising, and again, the, the video here that they showed at the very end links back to that, it's called Stay Out of the Mire, and if you've not watched it, I really do kind of strongly suggest that you do so, because it reminded me a lot of the Sons of Behemoth video, where it's kind of told from an almost fairy tale perspective, like a folklore one, and it's about how the, the, the soldiers are sitting around a fire, and basically they're kind of picked off one by one, and it, it was basically around things coming out of the fog, the mire, um, and also the fens as well. And again, linking back to what they were saying with Indrasta, how the the kind of the base of this model ties in with that kind of terrain. It seems as though the uh, the upcoming kind of units that we're going to see, or the I should say faction, I guess, is going to be kind of a, a, a bog dwelling. Um, one kind of coming up and it kind of ties in what um, Basil said in a previous video he said that he thinks it's going to be the Femir and you know what I really do agree with him I think it could be something similar to that that kind of goblinoid-esque character or creature and I think um, it will be interesting to see how they kind of appear through the lore as well because it wouldn't be kind of right to have them you know under the mountain I don't think with them being kind of aquatic dwellers. Um, <clears throat> maybe they're kind of drawn to Kragnos. I'm not sure whether it will be something to do with um, Gordrak as well, because as I said, with them being kind of goblinoid, maybe they're kind of drawn to the, the great war that he's leading. But it will be interesting to see um, how that kind of plays out, whether they appear in Kragnos or totally separate with the heralding of Age of Sigmar 3.0. But I would love to get your take as always. If you've not subscribed to the channel, if you could do so, that would be amazing. And if you could drop a like below, that would be brilliant too. What did you think about today's show? Um, are you excited for 3.0 as well? For third edition? And uh, what did you make of the Stormcast? Really looking forward to chatting with you with you all in the comments below. Thanks for joining me once again. I really do appreciate your time. Um, and yeah, I always do look forward to chatting with you too. Thanks very much and I'm sure we'll speak soon. Bye.